It's uh, the first episode of um, Senant Tech Podcast. That's a collaboration between um, Gabriel and me, um, me from Lightbath Limited and Gabriel from Infinite One in Romania. And um, we founded that podcast to um, just talk about, um, in general, holistic um, practices and um, technology in combination with that. And um, yeah, that's um, how everything started was, um, I think we know each other a little bit more than three years now, is that correct? Um, yeah, so when, when LIBO was just about to um, start and go live, um, Gabriel started connecting with me and since then we back and forth and occasionally have some phone calls uh, and talk about um, all these interesting things out there and um, the other day we decided you know what instead of just keeping it for us um, private we occasionally just go live and yeah just to share with the world our experiences and um, the, the things we find out and the things we love and the, um, yeah there's a lot of things out there we um, come across and sometimes go back and forth with each other and it always stays between t um, the two of us and that's why we decided to just um, go ahead and um, make from now on occasionally a live stream and talk about these things um, yeah um, I would start with, um, should I introduce me, me, uh, myself first, Gabriel, or you want to start? Um, go right ahead, because uh, this is the first time I'm doing this, so <laughs> I'm just catching up my breath, I'm just uh, hydrating, keeping myself <laughs> calm. <laughs> so uh, go ahead, give us uh, a bit of the context be beforehand. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, my name is Joel Griffin. I'm um, the founder and managing director of um, Lightbath Limited. Um, Lightbath builds these beautiful light devices. Um, these are brain entrainment um, light devices, which um, emit uh, light frequencies, which you observe through um, closed eyes and your brain waves synchronized to the frequencies of the light and that brings you in different deep trance and meditative states and um, we've been doing that a little bit more than three years um, everything started for me uh, as I started researching some psychedelics and um, had a little bit deep dive into um, mushrooms and psilocybin came across them uh, um, a Joe Rogan podcast with Dennis McKenna and um, Dennis McKenna was talking about um, light devices who do exactly that and that um, started my whole interest and uh, um, a very interesting journey for um, the last three years in developing the um, the, 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 the light light and um, yeah improving it from day to day um, yeah, that's what basically I'm doing. Um, we are based in the UK. We uh, make also light events where people can join a group of small groups, usually of about 10 people. And uh, we can try the light light out and um, can share their experiences within um, a group and um, can socialize, socialize on the, uh, with like-minded people. Um, yeah, that's that's about me. Um, Gabriel, you want to go ahead and just tell a bit what you're doing, what, what your business is doing? Yeah, at least I'll try to. Uh, although I'm feeling like a deer startled into the <laughs> car headlights. Um, so it's very interesting you mentioned how you started because I had somewhat of a um, similar um, experience with my um, beginning of the of this journey yeah, okay. so I used to watch a lot of um, podcasts in, to, in my spare time and I used to um, 
I, I have been studying medical engineering. Um, so in my third year of medical engineering, I think I uh, saw that very episode you were mentioning with uh, Terence McKenna, um, uh, actually Dennis McKenna, sorry, and his brother, yeah. And it was very interesting to find out about this type of technologies. And of course, at first I thought it was all a scam. I mean, you know how it usually goes with um, with devices of such nature that usually um, it sounds too good to be true. So I didn't immediately start it when I first found it about them. I think I... I researched um, a, a bit more about this subject, uh, roughly about three or four years until I really went uh, ahead and first purchased uh, the light and sound device. And to be honest, uh, at first it didn't work out well for me. I almost <laughs> returned it, and something um, so something made me actually go ahead and try a bit more and i think it's it was uh, the fact that uh, it felt good on my physical aspect of the yeah it felt good because you had to lie down and keep your back straight and, and it, 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 it just brings you in a, in, a, in a relaxing zone if you want or not yeah. and yeah. in order to experience uh, that you need to uh, yeah be relaxed and stay chill for a bit which uh, sometimes i found out i had trouble with um not that i'm having uh, adhd or anything but who knows right so nowadays we are always distracted um and you know after i used them i used casino for the first time and i wasn't really blown away like all of all of the um, comments uh, were suggesting that it's like it works like a charm from the from the get-go but I really noticed that I am like thinking differently in a more positive way and that it really does wonders on my motivation afterwards and although it wasn't really what I was looking forward to like you said or maybe you mentioned uh, like natural patterns, like maybe psychedelic visions or whatever, like, um, yeah, hallucinations. It didn't manifest like that for me at first, but I f soon find out, found out that it's actually a skill you can develop and, yeah, <laughs> really enjoy the experience. So that's how it started for me, and now it developed into something a bit uh, more, although I am not... I'm not the maker of uh, these devices. I'm trying to bring, bring them forward and I'm trying to promote them in such a way that um, everything is uh, very well explained and very, very well integrated into anyone's life. Yeah. So, so I think that that's, that has been a, a huge problem. If, if you're interested in one of these devices, you usually ended up on a website which didn't, didn't even had a, um, a web shop or anything like that. So if you if you, if you really wanted to uh, inquire one of these devices, you usually ended up contacting um, someone, and that person replied back, and then you entered kind of a, a, a direction where people started selling you these devices um, under the hand with demonstrations at home and stuff. So you have, have these ambassador programs. And I think, um, as far as I'm concerned, I think um, Libre Libaf is probably the, 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 the first um, web shop uh, where you actually can go on and just say, okay, I want that. And, uh, by I think Casino had it for a while or has it um, as well but I think um, for oh, my impression is that uh, in the rest of the world they're not really that uh, famous or not, not the, the other people know them yeah I think that I mean, the, the most the, 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 the most prominent ones are probably Pandora Star, Lucia 
and Roxy, uh, Roxina. That's probably the, the three um, main manufacturers out there. But all of them, if you go onto their website, you not really see a web shop where you can order one. So you see a price, and if you want one, then you have to go in contact with one of the ambassadors. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. They're all like, that's the thing. It doesn't, um, it doesn't add to the credibility of the product. So it kind of damages the perception of this kind of tech, in my opinion. Uh, so in general, if if people come to the events, um, most of them doing the the light experience for the first time, and. Because on in an event environment, you have uh, we look for the whole set and setting. So we have the correct music. We have maybe some incense um, uh, in the air. We have the, 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 the dim lights. So all the, the all the light machines are in place. Everyone has a comfortable place to lie down. So all the set and setting is in place. And if people come to the events and have the first time the, the, the light experience, the feedback in general is really, really great. But because uh, everything is basically prepared for them to experience the light in the best way. Yeah. If someone orders a light and I send it across the, the ocean and they unpack it, I often receive emails afterwards where people have kind of questions or struggle to get the, 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 these promised effects. And it, it's, it's sometimes difficult to say because I just don't know how pa people actually use it at home. If, if, they, if they just unpack it and hold it in front of their face and in broad daylight and try for 30 seconds. And I, I sometimes just don't know how people actually use it at home. Yeah. But in general, I think it's something you need maybe a couple times or maybe three, four times, say 15 to 20 minutes. And um, people who, who have already a, a certain experience in meditation or uh, relaxation or are better in um, relaxing in, in certain moments, they usually have an easier access to a better experience. I'm not saying you need to be an absolute meditation pro, uh, professional to get beautiful experiences, but in general, people who have a better ability to relax, they have an easier access to that older state of consciousness. Speaking of the, Another. Speaking of the older state of consciousness, um, it's sometimes abstract to explain what you see or what you experience in the light. And that is, a, is another difficulty sometimes to, to, to persuade on the website to explain to people um, what, what to expect. Because some people, they learn the light and only see, the only thing they see is maybe black and white flashing lights. But um, these people also report often back that they have quite heavy bod bodily responses so that they have maybe a, a tickling sensation in their legs or arms or they have the feel of weightlessness or they have a very deep relaxing state they're in with their body um all the people they report back they see extremely vivid colors and patterns and um, kaleidoscopic visions and that sort of thing and uh, all the people that just say, yeah, that they see just uh, different colors like pink, yellow, green, and that changes really fast. So the feedback is really broad. And I think everyone who experiences the light has a very individual experience with the light. So you can't say it's always like that. But when you sell a product and when you advertise a product you kind of have to explain it in a way that when people read through that they're actually willing to try it and actually willing to start working with the device and if you receive a, a light and you have kind of the expectation based on what you read and the expectation of what you've seen maybe other people saying about the light but then you experience it for the first time and maybe your visions are not as vivid or you're not seeing these 
extreme colors and patterns, then then some people uh, immediately go into that shock of, oh my goodness, I bought something for relatively a lot of money. And I don't see that what people explain what they see. And what I'm saying is that when you use it for a couple of times and just let the light do its job and maybe just be relaxed in that moment and not think about, oh my goodness, I just spent that much money onto something like that. Just let that be for a sec. Exactly. And just yeah. start using the light for a while. Then the, the, these, these positive effects and the, these visuals everyone is talking about start coming more and more. But as soon as you start thinking too much about what 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 money you spend or um, if you potentially got ripped off off from someone, then you 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 get in that closed mind state, and in that closed minded state, there is just no real real light journey possible. And yeah, that's why it's important important that if someone is not happy with product. We always hear for them, and they always can approach us if they if they have issues or they not get along with the device. But you have to allow yourself to just relax and enjoy the light, and yeah, see what happens. Yeah, fantastic answer. I mean, you kind of touched on all the points I would have mentioned. Um, Again, you when you go into this kind of uh, experience, you shouldn't expect a call. You shouldn't you shouldn't have your um, your small children with you in the room. Maybe I mean you, you should give yourself a little bit of time. You know, maybe even go uh, the distance to take a hot shower to re help you relax or do some yoga. For me, it took maybe a bit of a um, Tinkling around with the sessions or the frequencies, if you if you must. Um, what works for me very well, but we'll get there in a second. Um, so there is the the tech. There's also the technique. So you talked a bit of, about the technique, and what I would add is, yeah, a little bit of stretching beforehand if you do it at home. If you, yeah, if you do it, if you go in, into an event, you are on good hands. It's like an experience, um, not really an experience on rails, but it's really an experience that is facilitated for you. And you get almost the best of both worlds, a little bit of experimenting, a little bit of uh, guided meditation is amazing. So I would really recommend uh, going to events and um, doing those type of activities uh, because usually you don't uh, do only light work. Maybe, like you said, you include incense and um, yeah, really those type of activities which um, do add a lot of value to the to the experience. And what I am finding really fascinating are these type of uh, particularities, like you said, some of, some of the people go ahead and see only black and white, but have a lot of bodily sensations, right? Others uh, see a lot of uh, imageries, and although it's like a flickering light, you know, it has like a like a continuous image, almost like a movie inside your mind kind of quality to it, right? But let's mention even the colorblind folks, and then you, when you hear that uh, these type of technologies can make a colorblind uh, person see colors with his eyes or her eyes closed, I mean that's amazing. For me, that's that's beautiful, and um, each time you can close your eyes and reflect and go back at your center. I mean, again, it's uh, um, for me that's uh, really some deep learning you can you can get right there, and it's very important. I might have, to, yeah, I might have yeah. to mention as well that that they're probably. People now listening, they never really heard what the technology is doing. 
and um, you might have to jump in and just make a little bit um, a demonstration of what the, the light is actually yep. doing and um, and explain what 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 is what, what is actually going on when we speak about flickering lights and um, just to give a little bit of context um, so the for example that's a light bulb light and uh, the the light bulb light has underneath I just add different mode to it to give it a little bit of more on. okay also oh, that's it that's a libel light and the the libel light I come back to that version of the libel light but yeah that's a libel light and it has four LEDs on the bottom and these LEDs can flicker each one can flicker in a, a in a different frequency and what a person is doing when they use the libel light is they lie down or are in a sit upright sitting um, position and they have the, the libel light on, on a on a stand like that and um, you observe the flickering lights through closed eyelids. So you have about the, the light about an arm length away from you and you just look through closed eyelids into the light. Um, what that does um, to your brain waves is um, it's called visual brain entrainment. Um, so we all have um, brain frequencies that when the, 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 the brain um, communicates um, with, elect uh, with electricity and um, that generates um, frequencies and these frequencies can change um, depending on out the stimuli so you can have auditive um, stimuli like through um, um, binaural beats or you can have uh, visual stimuli um, through light or you can have uh, physical stimuli through um, vibrations for example and um, we go throughout the day through different brain frequencies and these brain frequencies are connected with um, different emotions and um, em emotional states in our in our everyday so as an example when you get up in the morning you are um, in a very deep, relaxed alpha state. That's when you don't really fall about anything in the day. That's when you barely fall back asleep. But yeah, you're in a very um, deep, relaxed state. So, so as you start waking up and thinking about um, the, the, your breakfast, maybe, and get up and yeah, put your clothes on and so on, then you enter the, the low beta state. And that's when we are capable of making um, everyday decisions, but we're not really stressed or we're not really problem solving or something like that. As we progress into the day, maybe start looking through social media, read the first few emails, then we go into the high end beta state. And that's usually a state connected with our flight and fight responses. So it's quite a a stressful state to be in but well, unfortunately it's a state where we spend quite a lot of time um, throughout the day so as soon you 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 try to um, please your, your 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 boss or you have to um, stand in the queue somewhere and you get upset and so on then you're in that high beta state and, and um, you, you might think the higher the frequency goes, the more unhealthy it gets. But as soon as you um, high reach high higher states, that um, you get into the um, gamma state. And that's usually again, a state connected with spirituality, with when you feel particularly connected to nature or God or something like that. So. Um, light is a very effective way to um, synchronize brain waves, and it's um, probably one of the most um, effective way. So when you compare it, to, for example, to binaural beats, then you have on either side of your ear you have a frequency, and the average between these two frequencies is the frequency your brain entrains to or synchronizes to. 
So um, that's a, it's, it's quite a huge effort for the brain to actually make that average and enter into music. So many people listening to binaural beats most likely not really have an effect but from the binaural beats. They just feel very relaxed, relaxed because they listen to music and uh, are maybe lying down and have that relaxing state. When you um, compare it to light, light is almost an immediate response. So when you, for example, look at um, certain user interfaces they built for um, disabled people, where you have different buttons on the screen, and each button uh, flickers in a different frequency and the person concentrates on a certain button and they measure that the brain frequency, as soon as they have the same frequency like the button and the, the brain frequency, that is, a, is, a, is, a, is an input or a user input for, for um, these user interfaces. And it's that quick that people actually can write on a, on a, on a keyboard, for example, with different frequencies um, of the different buttons. So it's something almost in, instantaneously. And um, with the light, when you observe these frequencies, so your brain can go from an alpha state into a high beta state within a couple of seconds, and from a high beta state into a gamma state, and then all the way back to an alpha state. So you activate all these different parts of your brain, and all these different parts of your brain um, contribute to your uh, emotional state. So you can go from a very relaxed alpha state into a very activated high beta state and observe how you feel and how, you, how your mental state changes when you do so. So we bring that back into our everyday life. Um, it's not really dangerous being in that high beta state. Uh, it's just dangerous that we're not really aware of that we are in that flight and fight response mode. And we actually treat people in a high state without really being aware of that, oh, I'm under stress, or I currently can't really make clear decisions. I just react, kind of. And through a regular uh, application with these light devices, you can learn how you, you, your brain waves are connected you, to your emotions and immediately learn how it feels being in an alpha state or in a, in a gamma state or so on. So that's what basically is going on. The nice side effect on the light is when you shift brain waves, when you go to sleep, then you basically do the same thing. So you go from a beta state into an alpha state so that the, 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 the lowering of the brain waves causes you to see sometimes colors and patterns which is called the hypnagogic state and the hypnagogic state is just that that liminal state between awake and going to sleep and for many it lasts just a few seconds maybe a minute and then you fall into sleep maybe you have that shaker where you maybe jump up once or start dreaming and so on. With the libel eye or with other um, brain entrainment devices like that, you can maintain that state over multiple minutes and enjoy basically the, these shifts of brain waves and not really fall into sleep. Many, many people fall um, into sleep when they use the light, but it's in general, you can kind of stick in between that um, awake and asleep state and yeah that's what basically the light is doing um, and yeah people usually just use it um, lying down with closed eyes or the people prefer to sit up and have it against the face like that so Joe you mentioned that uh, using the light uh, or actually not using the light and being in high beta state all the time is not really that dangerous. But uh, what about using the light? What about uh, how dangerous is the light? Because I receive that question a lot of times. So Me too. And the, the, the light, using the light is not dangerous in general. 
Yeah. It, it, it has some risks, but the risks are incredible low. So in terms of numbers, um, every 4,000 person um, has the tendency to react with an epileptic seizure to the flickering lights. It's not automatic that everyone who has epilepsy reacts negatively to the light. It's usually people who have uh, photo hypersensitivity um, react um, sensitive to the light. I mean, Netflix even uh, says that in the beginning of every show. Yeah, yeah. So you see that you occasionally go. in the corner of a movie. Um, that um, flashing sequences uh, are wrong in that and every, every single other video game does it yeah um, says so uh, or say emergency vehicles we are surrounded by flickering lights and usually people usually people have the tendency to react negatively to the flickering lights they know that they have that condition yeah and, and they don't have to go to concerts or you know, parties that yeah. feature that type of flashing. Or even even watching television, um, they might need um, certain special films going over the screens to yeah. just, just polarize the light um, a bit. Um, and people who are um, photo hypersensitive, they um, there are different types as well. Certain react just to a certain color of light. So um, some people just react to a certain frequency of light. So, yeah, and I mean, if, if you if you're pregnant into the ninth month or maybe something that's a bit extreme, don't use the lights yet. Get set, yeah, yeah. Balance yourself out and then go ahead and uh, give it a try. But what are the um, risks for not doing it? I mean, you you said that being into high beta is not really that dangerous, but what I'm trying to get at it now is what are the risks of not having a, like a balanced mind, basically. Yeah. What is the importance of perceptual diversity and um, all the mental states that we're supposed to go through uh, in our lives? I often bring up the example of a, of a monk living in a monastery. And when they go, get up in the morning, they, they start a quiet day without any social media or anything like that. No, uh, and they, they start the day with, a, with maybe a, a quiet breakfast. And then they go into relatively hard work or physical training or something like that. And they, they bring their, 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 their mind up to these high beta states. But they also around lunchtime they have also a quiet time and prayer and meditation and all that which brings these brainwaves back down so you have a, 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 a timeline in your day where you go up and you go down so we allow they allow themselves to to relax and to calm down again but in our um, Western world, um, we often just stay all the time in that high beta state. And we get up in the morning and the first thing we do is usually look at our phones and then we go through social media and then we already yeah. engage with something. And then we are always in the high beta state. The issue with yeah. that being in the high beta state is that you not really can make emotional decisions, that you're always in that um, flight and fight response and um, to make clever and good decisions in life you need a balanced and relaxed mind otherwise you always just react to anything that's coming in and that's that's i think where where we in the western world maybe miss some bits and that's where um, a light device like a light bulb light definitely could help people to just become aware of their different states of mind and also in general just calm down yeah and another thing i would add about uh, the light bulb light and other light machines is that you cannot you cannot only uh, relax with it you can even focus you can even help your focus because meditation is not about only relaxation actually meditation the end goal of meditation is focusing is performance is living life better 
It is yeah. yeah, enjoying it basically. So someone might uh, see this and hear everything we said and say it it uh, sounds too good to be true. What's the downside? What's the, what's the catch? What are the side effects? Are you going to get addicted to this? I mean, it's good to, too good to be true. Once you buy it, it's yours. You can use it whenever. You can lend it. You can give it to family members who really need that type of relaxation. Like, nobody knows how to meditate, and nobody has the patience for it. But if something like this can help you relax and discover meditation and discover your subconscious, which is like a whole other topic we should open up. Um, yeah, I mean, isn't it very... Uh, very powerful uh, tool, or is it a risky one? That's what I'm asking because people usually associate this with a um, risky practice. I mean, why why am I going to bring this into my life? I think I'm going to um, you know turn it on and have it on all day because if it feels that good, I'm going to keep using it until like I know myself. I'm going to abuse it like everything I am abusing. So I think we should let them know a bit more about the fact that you can uh, treat dependencies with this <laughs> what are your thoughts on that job so you know you not develop um, a, a classic addiction like you would be um certain other substances and drugs um but like with everything you can get addicted to Basically, anything you can get addicted to running and uh, video games and eating. And so, someone who has the tendency to addiction um, and basically has the tendency to abuse anything in their life, they probably would also abuse that sort of technology. But that's not the uh, I've never heard about someone abusing it. I mean, in the, all the research I. I, uh, I haven't maybe, come yeah. across anyone who told me that they have a serious problem with the light because they overuse it. I haven't heard anyone from my customers or as a feedback in general. I've never heard of it. But what I'm saying is, if you if you have the tendency to become um, don't know addicted to 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 to, to certain foods or exercise or whatever then you can also get addicted to something like that um but in general we assume people using the light have um a more healthy mind and a more healthy state of life so it's not it's, it's not here to treat anything but you can kind of improve your life in in the bits where you may be lacking and but I, I wouldn't be concerned that you get addicted to it. And also, uh, people who want to use it on a daily basis, they can go ahead and use it on a daily basis. The only thing I would suggest to them is to just make the, the light experience a little bit shorter. So when you do it on a daily basis, maybe keep it to the, say, 10 to 20 minute mark. And... Um, find the right time in the day. So if it starts interrupting your sleep, then you just move it a little bit early into the day. Um, if you're looking for, uh, if you see it helps sleep, then you move it later into the into the evening. So you kind of adjust the timing of of your light experience depending on your needs. It also feels on a complete different if you do it on a bright day in the afternoon. Or if you do it um, when it's dark outside um, in the evening. Um, some people do it in the morning and using it for a more activating uh, practice. They keep the light experience very short and it's maybe just five to ten minutes on a really high setting. And they activate just their brain and their mind for the day and, and being activated. A lot of people, they really use it for as a sleep aid and they use it more towards the evening, dark, maybe combined with some CBD flowers or a certain teas or something like that. Um, and if you, if, you, if, you, if you feel, oh, every day is too much, then just 
do it maybe two or three times a week, but increase the time of the light experience a bit, make more a ritual out of it. And yeah, I think everyone ha just has to find out what it suits them the best. But um, and I'm not I'm not concerned that people really fall into a, a serious addiction. That's not the, the, the general feedback I got from the people. I think yeah. it's more the, the tricky thing where people have to find their correct application and they find their, 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 their daily practice with it. Ah, but there it is. You said it. So you need, to, you need to see how it is for you. You need to feel it. You need to experience it yourself. So although you have only light and sound, yeah, or, or maybe, yeah, you, and, um, yeah, so the whole experience is based on light and sound, maybe incense, yeah. Although there's limited input, the experience itself uh, is a full-on sensory, sorry, um, yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's a blast. Uh, and maybe that's the reason you advertise it on the website as digital DMT. Yeah. Yeah, I think people who experience DMT or um, had an ayahuasca treatment or something like that, they usually report back that it's very similar, like an oncoming DMT experience or like a, a, an, an oncoming ayahuasca experience. Yeah, and I mean, uh, even McKenna uh, said it. And um, to be honest, this, this, this conversation of ours is the best one so far. So we've, we've touched um, on attention. At first you said you need to give it attention and to have interest in it. So we touched up on that. Then we also mentioned the, the fact that you can, besides relaxing, you can increase your uh, attention or, or basically your flow. You can have an increased focus. So basically in, enter a flow state, right? And then... Uh, of course, there's the relaxation period, um, which happens all throughout the session. But um, in the same time, it it gives room, like you said, for all that introspection and all the all the all those amazing ideas you can get out of a out of a session. So I think, yeah, we've touched on all those three main points that you, there's um, like a need for these um, steps, in my opinion, at least. So, yeah, so there's attention, interest. Yeah, you need to give it attention. You need, to, you need to pay attention to it. You need to make a ritual out of it. Maybe not, not need, but you should. Yeah. You should uh, take it serious. And then um, you, need, you, you should let it do its own thing. So accept that maybe you're not going to see a lot of kaleidoscopic, kaleidoscopic shapes or images, and then and then uh, try to relax into it. Try to work with it uh, instead of letting it work for you, right? So you're yeah. you're trying to aid your mind and trying you're trying to um, see what's beyond <laughs> what you see every day, basically. Okay. Because you're seeing the, with your eyes. On one of the on, on one of the events with Free Car, she she brought up a very nice comparison, and um, she compared it to a shower. And when you go to under the shower, you not really think where the warm water is coming from, and that it goes through all the pipes and into the shower head, and how the shower head has to divide the, the flowing water in these finest strands. So you basically go under the shower, just enjoy the warm water, and have the have the showering experience. And it's funny that a lot of people go under the light and they kind of start thinking too much about what the light is doing. And you get the, the best experience under the light when you just lie there or sit there and just let the light do its thing. And basically just go in that zone of being an observer of the situation instead of of trying to figure out which frequency and is it fast now is it slow now just observe and um, yeah I think that's where a lot of people kind of fail in the in the early stages and that's where where, where a lot of people 
soon they get used to it and, and know, okay, all is good. I'm not getting any negative side effects from it or it's, it's all good. As soon people can relax into it, then they find these um, really, really nice altered state of consciousness with colors and patterns or greens or um, these bodily sensations. But you have to let the mind go. Wild, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's abstract. <laughs> Your subconscious is uh, an abstract little thing, isn't yep. it? So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's all comes it all comes into uh, into the play and uh, uh, relaxation is the key factor and if you don't know how to meditate at least give it a try see maybe you're finding the path using it you, you, yeah. yeah using and, and helping yourself with this kind of tech so mate that's my humble opinion I had a person I had folks trying this uh, light and uh, saying that uh, they really, it, it really helped them remember some forgotten memories. And that happened for me too. And I also had a few, a few friends who never really um, had an experience like that before. And they were like um, really astonished how, how this didn't surpass something like VR tech. I'm not saying it should get that mainstream because I don't know how the world would look with uh, <laughs> with so many people uh, using uh, and being about holistic. Yeah. And, um, I, I think that the, the, the people who do the research and, and spending the time, they usually find they find really great access to the technology because they spend kind of the time with um, what is it doing, how is it working, um, how can I apply it to myself, how all the people are yeah. doing it. Unfortunately, there's at the moment not a huge amount of information out there. Even though it's quite an old technology, it's nothing new. Even the Romans and the old Greeks already used the effect, but they used maybe spoked wheels or they, they broke up the, the light with, with their hands. Uh, you might have seen the same effect when you drive along the motorway and you, the, the sun is deep and then you drive along some trees or bushes or something like that. Then you have that flicker effect as well. So it's, 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 we, we, we kind of experience it in our everyday life and um, it's nothing new. I mean, even in the early 20s and 30s, they, they start building the first electronic stroboscopes, which are literally meant to be that. And they researched schizophrenic attacks and they tried to replicate schizophrenia in, in, in healthy patients to, to find a treatment for it. And when, when in the um, 60s and 70s, um, they research further with, with, uh, with the psychedelic effect from the light, from the flickering light. In, 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 into the 90s, they start making these um, goggles you spoke about earlier, and um, they, they became quite mainstream. But what, in my opinion, what these goggles missing are the exposure of the rest of the body or face on light. So they really concentrate really on the eyes. And I think a lot of the of the patterns and the experience comes from the exposure of light everywhere in your face and of the body. Um, the, 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 in the early 2000s, then the Lucia light came onto the market. And that was basically the first one who really had that potential. It works on a little bit on a different principle with the hal halogen light surrounded with the LED lights. And uh, the Pandora Star and Actual Light made in the direction into what we know today as, as these uh, brain framing devices. But, but it's nothing new, but despite that, it's always an attempt, then some information go out there, and then 10 years later, someone else comes around, releases a new product, generates a little bit of hype, but it's always dying away. It's always dying away. And every time, you start basically from scratch. And I think nowadays we live in such a connected world. And, um, the internet um, 
allows to kind of share information much easier and um, share the knowledge we all gather. And it's important that we kind of uh, save that information for, uh, for, for, for the generations after us who maybe have different types of devices or that they can look back on that, uh, the things we um, reflect today and what we see today what is happening. But yeah, I just want to um, take the chance. Um, that is our first episode of um, Sendent Tech Podcast. And um, we just thought, okay, we, we start that podcast to talk exactly about um, about these things. It's it's not only um, like light devices, the um, older devices as well, like... Uh, devices to measure you brain waves and guide you through meditations or um, there are also devices like um, air, certain air purifiers and ionizers and the the um, other other type of um, don't know vibro acoustic devices where you um, feel um, experience music in a in a different way um, or um, light devices to to emit heat and you 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 gain the healing power of the of the warmth of the of the light. So there are loads of different devices we want to talk in the future about it. But it's always about main technology in combination with holistic practices and how our holistic practices could be improved through certain technologies out there. That's that's what the the, the core ID is on that um, podcast. If you're interested in these sorts of devices, maybe a little bit of broader variation of these devices, you can go on to um, Gabrielle's web infinite1.ro. Um, yes. Uh, no, so, you got it right. I, yeah. I, it's, this is not about that. Um, I shook my head beforehand because I, was, I, I thought you were saying something else. But yes, we are going to uh, get into a lot more than this. Yeah. This is not it. And um, like I said, there's, there are uh, technologies and there, there are techniques. So exactly. technology, yeah. techniques. We, we also can get into techniques. And like you said, you can you can buy yourself a Levi. If you don't know how to use it, you may get limited results out of it. So stick around, and you'll find out exactly how to wait, have wait, a, a wait, we just we, we, we just want to talk about maybe further techniques, how you can improve your light experience in general, how you can improve your practice, your light practice, practice um with different things and combining it with it another thing i want to mention is i released today on the website the um the new design of the liber magnify so the the liber magnify so far looked like that with the wooden case and so on and um that is the new design so in terms of technology, it's exactly the same light. So you have the same LEDs, the same lenses, the same touch panels. Everything is exactly the same like the, um, the Liber Magnify. Um, the Liber Magnify SE, SE just stands for Special Edition, um, has um, just a little bit of different design um, because we, um, over time, we meet new people and we um, also get feedback of certain people who want certain types of design and they want a certain type of design who reflects their lifestyle. And um, that's why we just created a, a slightly different design version of the LIBOR Magnify. That's that version here. So if you, if you look a little bit closer, it has kind of a um, slight translucency to it and it's um, a cork case compared to the wooden case on that. So the, it's just a little bit more uh, a minimalistic and different design. Um, but other than that, it works the exact same way. 
So it has the red lights compared to the um, yellowish white lights. But other than that, it's all the exact same. So I listed that one um, today on the website. So they're available now to, to order. Price is the same. Um, if you're interested in buying one for yourself, you can order them from around the world. And if your, world, uh, if you, if your country is not inside the list, you can always get in contact with us and then we can um, arrange something. In general, we ship throughout Europe and um, the US and Canada. Um, so if you're in that area, then that might be something um, for you. Something else I want to share as well is at the moment, Tree Car, that's the, the, the lady I'm working for with the events, mainly in London. Um, she spends currently the time in um, California and she has um, the Libelite and a whole Libelite set with, with her in her luggage. And um, she's going to make different stops and meet different people. But if you are from the California, US area, then you can um, get in touch with um, Tree Car um, on Instagram and um, ask her for, for the dates and events um, she's going to attend with the, with the Libre Live. And if you're interested in, um, in events in general, you, you want to experience the light and you are in the UK, you have the chance to do so next Friday, so today in the week, we have one in Kenworth, that's in the Midlands of the UK. Um, and then we're gonna be on the 1st of April in Manchester with the um, psychedelic community in Manchester, where we have um, a really nice um, setup and in between that, we have one plant in um, Yorkshire as well um, with the Soma uh, Wellbeing Hub in um, Halifax in um, West Yorkshire. And a very nice one will be the one on the 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th um, July in um, Wales. Um, it's called Liminal Land Retreat. And it's um, a collaboration between um, Tree Car, uh, Brian Morrison, and uh, Libor Light Bath, where we do different things like breath work and um, lucid dream um, courses and artistic expressions. And also we do the, the light experience in different set and settings outside, inside, with um, different other sensory inputs. So if you're interested in that, um, you can find all that information on the Live Live Bath website. And um, yeah, so you um, want to add something, Gabriel, for, from your side? Otherwise we would start wrapping it up, I think. We'll wrap this up uh, immediately after I show off my little collection of Liba. So I got the latest model. I got the first model, and I know these bad boys didn't didn't uh, were, were not made in a like a long production line. So if you want to buy yourself the special edition version, I mean that would basically be an investment. <laughs> even who knows? Who knows? Who knows for how much they could go on on eBay? <laughs> you know, in, like a few years from now. So. What I would add um, is, yeah, um, go ahead, try to see what's what with our um, social medias and, um, and websites, do your research. Um, if you want to, basically, if you want to give it a try beforehand, you can um, attend to one of our events. Uh, we also try. We also plan to do something together, but stick around to find out uh, more about that uh, soon, or, or uh, yeah, rather sooner than later. But um, locally here, I'm we're, I'm trying to attend to 
uh, a few festivals and um, social events that are open to the public. Uh, so far, I used to uh, attend only private events and host uh, one-on-one sessions and small groups. You and say because... what, what, what the area is. What, what, is the, what, what is the area you're working in? A lot of people maybe don't know where you are. Ah, uh, I'm uh, located in Bucharest and um, I operate via contact. Um, you know, you can contact me via the website, uh, email, whichever. It works, whichever. You can call me. <laughs> I'm all up for this. And uh, um, I'm planning to uh, do uh, sound and light uh, the, the therapy session or yeah some sound and light healing yeah that's how uh, you word it um, I'm really interested into the scientific uh, aspect of it everything that has a scientific um, paper behind it I'm all up uh, for that and I'm uh, willing to exchange scientific um, you know um, like mm, literature about uh, this next and uh, um, if you want to attend uh, uh, the Romanian version of uh, Burning Man you can uh, you'll find me there uh, that happens uh, somewhere between uh, 23 of July and uh, 31 30, yeah in the first east of July, yeah, and then maybe you'll find me at Waha in August. So that's a bigger festival where you might find me. Here in Bucharest, we will um, announce a few events, and maybe in another couple of other uh, cities here locally in Romania. Otherwise, yeah, keep tuned. Uh, <laughs> we'll hear each other. Yeah, I think it was a good start and um, I think the, the next episode we go more into um, of course we always probably have to little bit to explain what, it, what it's doing and so on but next time we might get more into actual techniques how you can improve the, your light experience how you can target really that, that spot where you have to be to um, get further into, into the um, into these um, all the sets of consciousness with the light. But I think for, for, for today, we just basically broke the ice and just um, started doing it and talking about it. And yeah, um, <laughs> uh, thanks everyone for, for listening. <laughs> and if you have any more questions or inquiries in the meantime, just feel free to, to contact us over social media and over the website. Yeah. And ask any questions uh, for today. I'm spent. I think I'm going to change my T-shirt. I sweat <laughs> like a, <laughs> like crazy here. You get used uh, to it. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, um, yeah. Thanks for watching, though, and um, really hope to see you again soon. Yeah. Really soon. All right. To the next one. Thanks. Gabriel. Nice talking to you, Joe. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. <laughs> you too. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.